so the, welcome everyone. This is the new Clinical Research Connections. Um, we have moved to a quarterly short high level updates from research leadership format um, based on discussions with the clinical research community. Um, please let us know um, how you like this and if there's um, other things you would like to see. But in the interest of time, we have six people talking, five minutes each. So we're going to get started now. Um, our first um, leader is from the CCTSI CTRC, and it's Archana. She's going to talk about updates from those groups. Great. Thanks, everyone. I'll go ahead and share my screen here. Are you all able to see my presentation fine? Okay, great. Uh, well, my name is Archana Mande. I work as a CTRC protocol specialist, and I'm here to represent CTRC, so Clinical Translation Research Centers. Uh, it's basically one of the best places to conduct your research um, here on campus. At CCTSI, we are focused on unique needs of clinical investigators, and we, connect, uh, we conduct studies in varying specialities. The adult and pediatric CTRCs provide dedicated research-only space for clinical research, and some of our resources here include specialized research nursing, advanced practice provider, core lab services ranging with several analytical testing that is available, specialized nutrition services, cardiovascular bioimaging services, and exercise testing. I have a quick QR code here if you want to go uh, look at more of our services on our website. Our CTRCs also support investigator-initiated studies, multi-center NIH studies, and industry-initiated protocols. Some of our additional facilities and resources include body composition testing, no-charge rooms for investigator-initiated studies, infusion room, negative pressure rooms, sleep study room, and a metabolic chamber. Research is a team sport, and we really look forward to joining your team. And we are available at various locations here. So on the campus here at CU Anschutz, at the University of Colorado Hospital, Children's Hospital, National Jewish, and University of Colorado Boulder. And finally, we also have an open house, which is coming up pretty soon. So it's on November 6, 2 to 4 p.m. It's basically an opportunity for us to meet our current users, and we welcome several new users or anybody who's just interested to come and visit CTRC. So please do come. Um, we do have a sign-up QR code here. I'll just put it up for a few more seconds here. We also have uh, email announcements going on pretty soon. So we look forward to seeing several of you there um, and come visit our course. There'll be fun activities, snacks and swag, and we just look forward to connecting with you all. So bring a colleague or a friend with you and we look forward to seeing you. With that, I'll be happy to take any questions now or towards the end, uh, but thank you for your attention. So based on how fast we're moving, if you do have questions for any of the presenters, go ahead and put them in the chat. And if we have time, we'll respond to them at the end of the meeting. But if not, um, the presenter can follow up via email. Um, so with that, we'll hand it over to Allison Lakin with regulatory compliance updates. Okay. Hi, everybody. Uh, nice to see you. Um, I only have a couple of things. Um, so the by now, I'm hoping everybody knows, but maybe not. Um, but with Deb Bernard's departure at the end of um, 2023, we restructured CREO. So the, the name keeps getting used for various things, but it, mean, it now means different things. So I just want to make sure everybody's on the same page. So we... Um, we split the external IRB and the um, quality improvement audit process that now lives under COMAB, under John Heldens. And John has a new title and is the Assistant Vice Chancellor for the Human Research Protection Program. So um, I'm pleased to kind of 
put all of that together and I, and I'm sure John is going to talk about some of the work that they're doing to really try and streamline the um internal IRB reliance and the external IRB so that it's easier for you as the customers to know kind of what that process looks like. So that's one piece that um, separated. And the other piece is the contracting. So um, Christine Ahern is the director um, for regulatory compliance um, because her role now oversees both contract, clinical trial contracting, CDAs, MTAs, as well as privacy and conflict of interest. So she also has responsibility for um, BAA's data use agreements. So kind of all the clinical agreements that are not federal and foundation. We work very closely if there's human subject research work that is coming through on the federal side that's unusual, then we work closer together. But she's taking responsibility for that. And then Kat Sutherland is um, now the director of CREO. So, um, and she is responsible for all of the approval process that is managed through the portal and through Encore. So, um, and, and the goal there is really to focus on streamlining that process. So um, I think having dedicated resources that can really be a little more focused um, will hopefully help us with your input to kind of streamline that process. So that's, that's where we are internally. It's taken us a while to get all of those pieces formal through HR, but I think we are there now. Um, the only other thing, just to remind everybody, it is conflict of, uh, it's, um, conflict of interest disclosure period time um, comes to the end officially at the end of the month. So please, if you can get your faculty, co-investigators, other coordinators all doing the conflict of interest disclosure, that just saves us a lot of time corralling at the end of October, trying to get everybody doing this. So thank you. Thanks, Allison. Kat, you're up next. Okay. Hello, everybody. I only have a couple things. Uh, first thing is congratulations to John. So well-deserved. Um, and then I'm sure you're all aware we had a Zendesk outage, uh, started about Thursday morning and went until yesterday mid-morning. Um, if there are tickets that were sent between those, those times, could you please um, resend and just say, I'm resending this. We've had some problems with the queue and, and want to make sure that we're responsive to all of your messages. And then my last update is uh, Encore is going to be moving to the cloud. So we're taking it from the current servers and moving it to cloud hosting. And we're looking at February for that move. And we will keep you posted through the Encore newsletters. Um, and then the last thing is, is in my newer role, um, if you have any questions or feedback for me, uh, please feel free to send me an email, send me a Teams message. Uh, I'm totally happy to chat with any of you. Awesome. Thanks, Kat. Short sure. Sweet. <laughs> John, you're up. All right. Hi, everybody. Um, yeah, we have other leadership changes as well within Comerb. Um, Ryan Lowry is the new assistant director for Comerb, and Christy Williamson is another assistant director for Comerb, and Christy's over quality assurance and IRB reliances. Uh, and then Mary Brown is the new IRB manager for panels A and B. So we've had a lot of changes this summer. Um, we are reorganizing our IRB reliance uh, activities. So we had the external IRB office and then Comerb would serve as a uh, single IRB more and more often. Um, so all of that activity is going to be organized under a single team under Christie. We are hiring uh, for additional support there and hopefully that'll be reorganized um, in the months ahead. Um, and then the new application seems to be going very well. Um, 
I uh, hope to send out a survey to users of the new application to get some feedback uh, before too long and tentatively looking at requiring the new application January 1st. That's all. Awesome. Thanks, John. And then we have Marissa Macri here from UCH. Yeah, thanks so much. Um, just a couple of updates, mostly about how to stay um, up to date with UC Health policies and stay connected. Um, the first thing I want to announce is that we do have a newsletter. Um, so this is for UC Health specific announcements and um, procedures, any policy updates we include here. And the newsletter is sent out every two weeks on Tuesday. So if you did not receive it this morning, um, please feel free to email us so you can be added to that listserv. And the newsletter archive lives on our website. So if you haven't been added, don't worry, you'll still be able to read through those updates. Uh, we include different educational opportunities uh, as well that our team hosts. And then on the next slide, one of those educational opportunities is our research expo series. Um, so the next one is um, on Thursday of this week, October 24th, you can uh, check out the topics on our website, really website heavy driving you to it. Um, lots of great material there. Um, and the next one will be on the Epic upgrade. Uh, we're having a quarterly upgrade over the weekend on the 26th. So um, you can join us for a Halloween themed research expo where you'll learn about the new features available in Epic. Um, and then one final announcement on the next slide. <clears throat> We have a lot of requests for EHR embedded research. This includes um, uh, different documentation uh, that is built into EPIC integrations, uh, patient-facing applications, provider-facing applications. And so if you are needing a letter of support for funding, um, you can find a application for that on our website. This will help also get you in the queue later on once you're funded. Um, so that you're uh, going through the process in a streamlined and efficient way so that um, EPIC can accommodate your embedded research applications. Um, if you do not need funding, please still use this application for um, uh, incorporating your EHR research in, in UC Health CHR EPIC. Um, so you can learn more about that process on our website and use the bookings link if you have any questions about moving through that process. Um, and then the last slide is just a reminder that mentioned a couple of things that are on our website, but we do have a lot of great materials here for onboarding, training, mon monitor access to Epic, uh, vendor access to the hospital, research pricing, startup, and uh, tools for recruitment. So really great resource there. That's it for the UC Health updates. Thanks, Marissa. Um, I have a few updates and then there, there have been some questions coming into the chat that we'll just review, but, um, so a couple of things we do, the OVCR does also send out a research bulletin, um, from Dr. Flagg and it includes updates from all of the different offices within the OVCR. So look for that. It actually came out this morning. If you're not receiving that, let us know. Um, the other things that I have to mention is, are that we have our, Clinical Research Roundtable on November 12th from 12 to 1. Um, that's being hosted by the Clinical Research Workforce Development Group. Um, that one is, we are going to be talking about the new research onboarding. Um, what do we want to call it? Um, content that was developed in Canvas. And so um, Haley Steiner, who's on here, has worked with a working group to create onboarding content that is more universal to clinical research professionals on campus. And so she will do a demo of that and we'll discuss that and show it to everybody. It has been piloted by a few groups and we will actually launch it for everybody to use um, in the next month or two. Um, so if you're interested in that, please come to the round table uh, on November 12th. Um, the other thing is we have our quarterly recruitment workshop coming up on November 20th from 12 to one. Um, the topic of that one is clear communication, uh, and it's we're talking about using plain language for research. We have Dana Abbey, who is uh, associate professor at the Strauss Library, coming to talk to us about how to use plain language in your research documents. 
Um, those are the updates that I have. So we got through everything in 15 minutes, not 30 minutes. But now we have time for questions as well as the, the questions that we had was there's a question on what Christine Ahern's office is called for clinical research agreements. And Allison's response is there's not really an overarching title. She's in regulatory compliance and oversees contracting, CUI, privacy, and export control. Uh, and then there's a question on whether Encore would work faster in the cloud. And Kat said, we'll know more after testing, but she doesn't think that there will be much of a change in performance for users. And Marissa also added that Firefox is the best browser for use of Encore, um, which I did not know, so that's useful. Um, Archana posted the um, form stack for the CTRC open house. So if you're interested in attending that, um, click on that link and sign up for that. Uh, and then Sarah has put the registration link for the round table as well as the um, workshop that I mentioned. Okay, I think I got through everything in the chat. Are there other questions or things that people want to ask the, the group that's on the call today? It's awful quiet. Um, I think, one, oh, Allison has something. Go ahead. I just, I saw Sherry, so that reminded me. Um, for those of you who are contemplating doing CAR-T work, even with industry sponsors, um, you should be aware that there is now a prioritization committee that just takes a look at those. Um, when you submit to the HSR portal, there'll be um, some, the, there's a question that will trigger us to reach out to you and ask additional information. And we are going to be keeping a closer eye on those studies, even though they're industry. Um, and so we have developed um, in collaboration with the Cancer Center, a, uh, a non-oncology uh, data safety monitoring committee. And so you, there will be feedback to the PI and the research team with expectations on um, additional um, submissions so that we can just keep keep track of these. There's a, a, a desire right now just to understand the volume of work that is happening both clinically, research, and in oncology and non-oncology. Um, in the same facility in the hospital because it's there's such overlapping um, and this is all high risk work. So that's why we are heading in that direction. So you may just, you may be one kind of surprised when you get a little bit more oversight and feedback on your industry clinical trials. So, so. Um. Heike reminded me too, just to mention, because it's been a while since we've, we've brought this up, all INDs and IDEs on campus now are required to go through the IND IDE office. Um, that's as of July of 2023. Um, so for those of you who may not have done one in the past 18 months, um, but did previously, the process has changed. So please reach out to the IND office um, before initiating any communication with the FDA. Anything else? John, I saw you come off mute. Yeah, I'll just add that going forward, the IND, IDE office and Comer will try to meet together with investigators when we're sort of uh, getting early information on new projects just to keep make sure we're all on the same page. And the IND, IDE office is plugging using EREG and EDC. So just... Um, for those of you who are not aware, we do have an electronic reg uh, binder solution. Um, Kat's team is um, supporting that. So please, if you're interested, you don't have to be doing an IND, IDE study uh, to use it. Um, it will it will help you avoid the stack of paper and uh, hopefully from a business continuity perspective be, be useful. So please think about using it. Sorry. Yeah, same, same for Advari EDC. You don't have to have an ID or an ID for that. It is 
um, part 11 compliant, we can use it for just single site studies at the current time. Um, but there are teams both in Oakcrest and Crest that have been certified to build studies in a bar EDC. So if you do have a need for a part 11 compliant EDC or just want the functionality of a bar EDC, reach out to, to those teams. Anything else? Okay. Um, yeah, so we, we got through it in about 21 minutes. I think let us know if anybody has additional ideas or people that they want updates from or things like that for this meeting. We're not, we did not set up a poll for this meeting like we were doing for the hour meetings, um, things like that. So just provide any feedback that you can um, on how you like this new format. All right, thank you all for your time today.